Welcome to Radio Fixer's channel. Subscribe for upcoming videos. In this video, we're going to discuss about how to fabricate or making those missing parts for your classic radios. We're going to discuss about what product to use, how to use them to get the best results. Also, what method to use depends on the size of your parts to make the molds. I did my best to organize all these videos so you can find it much easier. The way you access it, go to my channel, uh, select playlist, and then select fabricating parts. And meanwhile, you're here in this channel, go ahead and subscribe. And this is where it's located, subscription icon and select the bell so you'll be notified for upcoming video and select the thumbs up so YouTube uh, suggests this video to others. Thank you so much. All right, let's talk about what you know product you need to fabricate these parts. It all depends what you know brand and silicone mold and resin you are using. So make sure to do research some you need equipment to remove the bubbles from the mold as well as resin and some you do not need that uh, any type of special equipment to do that so there are three methods to fabricate the parts one using vacuum chamber and vacuum pump to do that job Again, what this does is remove the bubbles from those products. The second one, you can use pressure pots and air compressor, again, for the same reason, remove the bubbles from the product. Or you have the option, the third option, use a product that it doesn't need any equipment to remove the bubble, and it's called bubble-free silicone mold and bubble-free resin. As remember, by selecting the proper product, your job can be simpler to make all these parts. You can actually fabricate any missing part for your radio or any other equipment. They are all true, they call it two part mold to make any of this. So it can be missing. A battery cover for your transistor radio or anything like that. These are for the clock radios. Uh, you know, to view how I fabricate this, go to my playlist and check for Zenith G516 part 7. We go through it complete detail how to make this a small part. And this is, as you see, is very detailed knob. To view how I create this, go to my playlist, check Rat House Radio Part 8, and you will see how we actually fabricate uh, these knobs in different color. You might have missing screws like this. You can actually fabricate this. You know, to see how I fabricate this, Go again to my playlist, check under GE Sportmate P860, that is a part 3. You can check that out and you will see how I create that. And this is for upcoming video, this is the Philco knob and I need a bunch of this for Philco, so we're going to make this in upcoming video can also fabricate very detailed knob like this. This is Coca-Cola knob for tube radio that I need to fabricate. I have some missing one on those. You know, this is also upcoming video that I create missing handle as well as the knobs for my Feta 1000. I was missing also can fabricate for RCA. This is a two part. I have the knob that you can actually fabricate this. Hopefully down the road we're going to show you how to do all this. This is for the Zenith. Hopefully this video is going to help you to understand the process that we are going through 
to uh, fabricate, uh, you know, whatever is missing. It is lots of fun if you can actually fabricate it yourself. You know, it's a great accomplishment. In any, any part, you can actually make those. All right, these are what you need to uh, be able to make those parts. This is synthetic molding clay, you know, that actually you can, I will show you later on how to use this. So definitely get one of this. And the good, good thing about this is, you know, it never dry. So you need that. You need some type of measuring cup. It depends of the product you use. Some of them you can use this type of measuring cup. That's how you measure it. Some you need a scale like this to be able to measure in it. So make sure to read your product. Which do you need? You need an empty bottle of vitamin or medicine. I will show you what to do with that later. Cap like that. I'm sure you do have that around the house. You can use those to be able to pour the resin inside your mold. So you need a couple of this. You know, be able to steer something like flat in the top like this. That's what I purchased. And this is a coffee cup, believe it or not. And it's great because I can pour here and mix it right in this cup. Then you need several colors of dyes for your resin to be able to dye it to make it to the color that you're looking for. You have an option to buy individual or you can buy a pack. If you look at it, you can use any of them. There's so many of them available. You can get the dye to match your resin, uh, the brand. It's not necessary, but they design for that product. So really, these are the only thing you need uh, to be able to fabricate your parts. Okay, first I got some of that clay. You know, you make it like a ball like this. Get one of the like a, a cup, you know, the lead for the yogurt, whatever. Put this here, another lead over it. You want to flat this thing. If it gets under your nail, don't worry about it. You can have a gloves if you prefer. So, I'm going to flat this. I don't want it too flat, but you know, it's just enough for that size. You see? Okay. And one of these measuring cup I got, I cut the end off. So this is going to work perfect right here. Like that. When I press it down, everything's going to work out good. Then I get the bottom of the pan which is actually almost the same size. And go in the center. Is that deep enough? The goal is this fit in there. Like that. See? Because this is going to be two part mold. You cannot make one part mold with something like this. So this is a two part mold. This goes in the center. Press it just a little bit down, not too much. Like that, where it doesn't fall. You get this cup, put it right in the center before do that. I'm gonna get again, put some holes here. Usually I put too close to each other. I should go really deep about this deep, that's all. And two like this. Why when I line it up then it's much easier this way to line up this second part. Put this in the center. Make sure the knob is in the center. See? I press it down. Well, from from here there at least be a quarter inch. And okay, that should be fine. 
All right. Then this is ready to mold be poured in. Again, it's going to be two part. That's why usually I make it up. This should be thick enough. Looking good. Now we can mix these two together. Silicon rubber, because it's one to one ratio. I had a good reviews about them, but uh, we'll try it uh, to see how it's working out. First, let's measure to see how much this way. So that's 25. I'm going to put it at zero. Not this part A. That's 75 ohms. So we go up to 150 ohms. Okay. This is, you know, stir it for about five minutes. Let's do it. You want to stir it pretty gentle. You don't want to be too hard to create bubble. All right, I'm stirring it over six minutes now. Take a little longer because I want to make sure I'm going pretty slow. I don't want to create any bubble. Okay. Hopefully it's ready. Okay. Then what you do, you tilt this a little bit like this. You pour just a little bit at the time inside one corner like that. So say if it goes over a quarter of inch over the knob, then you're in good shape. All right, so what we will do now, we let it set uh, overnight. It says about four hours, but I'm will usually wait overnight. All right, we're gonna demold this radio knob. So it's sitting for good over 24 hours or so. So let's, let's take it out. We want to take this clay out. All right. We came out. Looks very good. We're going to use this mold release with the brush. You have to put over the mold, not the part over the mold, at least three times. That's what they're saying. Let's do that. First, let's clean it up. Again, this is going to be two-part mold. That was the first part. Second one, we're going to pour over it. You see what I'm doing? I'm removing all the extra rubber that it got right on the knob. Because I want my cast come out pretty good. Looking good. You just want to put this over the mold, over the silicone only, not the parts. Okay, we're going to try, we're going to let it dry, then after dry, we have to do this three times again. Now we are ready to pour the second part of the silicone rubber. This is a two-part mold. As you saw, the first part is done. What I did, I got two electrical wire, you know, run one. It goes on the rim. And that's what actually is it's bigger. I'm going to pour the resin through that, that side. The other side is right on the top, as you see. I think this is going to make it easier. So let's make some silicone rubber and fill up this and let it set overnight for tomorrow I can't take it apart. We pour about 40 ounce of each this uh, silicone rubber. Now we want to mix them and the total is 80. I'm going to mix this at least for five minutes. And we're now waiting as the bubbles are coming in the surface. There's no bubble inside that I can't see. So I'm going to pour it here now. You tilt this like that. And you pour it just a little bit at a time. Like that. You don't want to pour it too fast because it's going to create bubbles. 
I let this set for a while. So we're going to now take it out of the mold. First thing I'm going to do, of course, remove. See, this came off. That is very good. This is where I'm actually going to pour the resin. You see, this was wire that I'm going to use this right here. You know, for the air comes through. All right, we're going to use rubbing alcohol just a little bit with cotton swab. Put it right around the edge. So be able to demold it. All right, and also this side as well. Squeezing it. I start loosening up. If some area does not loosen up easy, I use the screwdriver go around. But this is, seems like it's coming out with no issue. So you press it. It's gentle. You don't want to damage it. Now because we use that mold release, look how easy it's coming apart. Let's go. See those little pens to be able to line them up. You can be gentle, you don't want to rush this thing. Okay, pens are out. Sometimes if it doesn't come easy, I use this right around it. See now it popped out. Because you don't want to yank it out. See a little like that. See it comes out. Now the center, you see how it's stuck in there? Again, a little alcohol. Just a little bit, not that much. See it comes out. That is perfect. You see how nice it is? Excellent. All right. Okay, unless the knob is out. See those two pens that I put close to each other? is right here, so I don't need to think, you know, when I put the resin in, I don't need to say, oh, where it goes, I know exactly go boom like that. All right, like this. Okay, now this one, as you see, it comes all the way through. See that? So I'm going to take that out from here. Later on, I'm going to insert that inside. But then when you want to take the mold apart, it's much easier if you have this piece in there. So the goal is you pour from here. I'm going to fill up all this area, then from the top, right here it comes out, which is right there, as you know if you can see it or not. It came out very good, very nice. The only thing I'm not happy about this, you know, it's not that strong rubber. All right, let's make the resin now. So what I did, I got this like a insulation of wire, took the wire out, you know, cut a small piece, and I put it right here into the mold, and uh, made something like this, put a couple of things together. So I'm going to put this right here in the top, the other hole. I'm going to pull the resin in, it comes out the bubbles from other side, uh, that way we can get all the detail like this. So I like to try to make something exactly like this. Let's see if it's doable or not. What I did, I put the knob inside this is small measuring cups. And pour water up to 20 uh, milliliter. And now I'm going to remove it. 
from the crop. Now we're going to see how much it dropped. Right now it's sitting close to 15 milliliter, as you see in the picture. So the difference is 5 milliliter. So the resin that I'm going to make it should be about 5 milliliter. Uh, we have enough resin for the entire knob. That's the best way to figure these things out. This is an empty cup. It's exactly like the other one. We're going to turn this on. I want to measure how much this cup weighs. And it's 0 0.05. We're going to zero it out. That means now the scale measure it. You're not going to deduct the, you know, how much it weighs this from the total calculation. Now we put the one with the water, 10 ounce. That's 0.35. That is how much, you know, the resin we need to add together. I'm going to go 40. So it's 20 part A, 20 part B. I'm going to go extra. Uh, always to, uh, it's good to do that because you don't want to be short. All right. I usually use, uh, you know, this type of cup. This is for like a coffee, measuring coffee, something like that. The reason I'm using this because inside there is no edges. You know, this is a good product to use to mix. It's going to be easier to mix and it's easy to pour. Like you can bend it like that. Then you can clean it and reuse it again. So let's measure this. That is 20. We're going to zero it out. I put 20 part A. As you know, I'm going to use this product part A and part B. And then you want to make everything ready to do this job. Because when you mix all this together, you don't have that much time, you know, to do this. So you need a stick like this. Also, I have going to use these two die together. Already I like the product. So we're going to use at least start two drops of white, one drop of red. Then we're going to look at to see do we need to add more uh, red or not. As you see, the lead also I mark that because you don't want to put in wrong, you know, die. So Make sure everything is ready before you get it started. So let's put part A. We're going to go to 20. Watch the scale. OK. That is 20. Always is good to clean the lead. Now part B. Let's go to 40. Okay, take it out of the scale, of course. We don't need this anymore. Now, as I said, we're going to try two drop of white. I might need three, I don't know. Let's try with two. You always can add more. That's one. That's two. And one drop of red. All right. So we're going to watch the clock. We're going to start stirring it because you don't have that much time. Make sure you stir it very well, not too fast because you're going to create a bunch of bubbles. Go side like this way. See that way. Go around like that. You want to make sure everything is mixed. If it's not mixed very well, it's uh, not going to cure. Three minutes non-stop. See, using this cup is good because you can go stir it pretty well. Okay, that's three minutes. Clean this like that. You wanna, don't want to use waste the material. You want to make sure you have enough. So what we do, we know that's already set. You put this cup here like that. 
and I start pouring it inside. I try to make my job easy, then gentle, not too fast, like that until it comes out of the other side. You see what I'm doing? Hopefully you can see. All right, now we're going to let it sit to dry. All right, this is set almost uh, 12 hours, you know, so let's take them out of the mold. Let's see how this turn out. Be gentle with it so you don't break the... All right. That's it. All right, folks, it came out pretty nice. Take the extra one off. Like that. You know, these are the two pen. This is where I poured, and this is where it exits. So this can be cut off. Not bad at all. At this time, I want to take the opportunity and thanks my subscribers uh, with their uplifting comments. You always encourage me to upload more videos since this is just a hobby of mine. Again, I appreciate you. Enjoy all these videos and you all have an awesome day. Take care.